Hello, you're watching Global Insights, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. I'm Ulsi Young. Now, South Korea aims to become a global pivotal state, intending to play a greater role in supporting common values for a better world and the good of all of humanity. And in doing so, South Korea has a lot to draw from, from its growing soft power presence in the world, with its vibrant music and entertainment industry, technology and innovation, and of course, its experience of rapid socio-economic development. And today we speak with Im sang woo who served as South Korea's first ambassador to Madagascar. And his passion for Madagascar's people and their future went beyond the usual outreach and engagement. He became a pioneer for South Korean diplomacy, uh, putting South Korea's global pivotal state vision into practice even before it was formulated. And his efforts to set up the country's first diagnosis center for COVID-19, increase food and medical supplies, and also stage football matches, K-pop concerts and even elections have been recognized by the country and the global community. Ambassador Lim's video logs of his time there have gained a growing fan base on YouTube and his book released um, last year elaborates on his experiences, challenges and the hopes he has for the country going forward. And it's wonderful to have you in our studio today, Ambassador. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and your book, uh, it funny because you really don't even have to read the book to sense your passion for Madagascar, your heart for its people. And uh, you can really see why the people there really appreciated your efforts uh, while you're ambassador. And well, it's quite significant as well because you were South Korea's first ambassador to Madagascar. So um, what was that experience like? Yes, uh, well, every day was really a great honor to serve as the first uh, Korean resident ambassador to Madagascar. And I think one of the reasons why uh, the Malay's people welcomed my arrival with uh, so much enthusiasm was uh, because they could see in Korea that their dream of national development was not just a dream but could actually uh, become a reality just like uh, it did for, for us. Uh, in fact, uh, Madagascar uh, used to fare better than us until 1967. Their per capita, per capita GDP was higher than us. And they have great talent too, you know, handicraft, you know, people are really talented with their, with their hands. Actually, this uh, clothes that I'm wearing, this is made in Madagascar. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and um, let's see that, and they, they knew that Korea was a country that was not only colonized, but was also completely destroyed by war. But, uh, you know, rising from the rebels of war and become the world's 10th largest economy was really a kind of like a source of inspiration for the Madagascar people. And in addition, uh, K-pop uh, was huge, really, amongst the young Malagasy. Uh, and we held annual K-pop contests in front of a fully packed audience. And, you know, the Malagasy, they're all singing together to all the songs of the, of, of the Korean K-pop pop stars, you know, like BTS. I don't, I don't know the <laughs> words myself, but they just knew all the words. And, and I, uh, and the first time I went to the Cape of Contest to deliver a short uh, congratulatory remark, I was just overwhelmed by the, the reaction of, of the crowd. Well, Madagascar is, of course, uh, very well known for its beautiful uh, natural environment. And uh, well, at the same time, though, it has uh, the most vulnerable population in Southern Africa, uh, with four out of five people living below the poverty line. And well, what are the major humanitarian crises that they face? Yes, uh, as you said, Madagascar is really a beautiful country. Uh, home to a lot of unique flora and fa fa fauna. Uh, for instance, the Baba tree originates from Madagascar. And also the Limor, uh, which was actually a King Julian, the animated film Madagascar, can all be found in that country. But on the other hand, it is uh, one of the most impoverished countries in the world, with uh, about 78% of its uh, 27 million people living under the poverty line, which is now set at 2.15 US dollars per day. And the southern part of Madagascar is where the country suffers the most, with an estimated uh, million people suffering from malnutrition. The embassy in Madagascar is not South Korea's largest, you know, um, diplomatic mission abroad, but still you tried your best and did what you can to really help with the humanitarian projects there. So uh, could you elaborate on some of the efforts you were involved in? Yes, of course. Uh, we, we tried to uh, launch uh, various uh, humanitarian projects uh, with various organizations in, in Madagascar. And uh, for instance, uh, we launched a project in the southern part of Madagascar to alleviate the malnutrition uh, uh, situation, for instance. And also, uh, uh, you know, the biodiversity of Madagascar also was, is in great danger. 
and that also was one project that we launched. This, uh, I, th I think, this video that we're watching now is uh, my uh, my uh, when I led the expedition team with uh, the World Food Program in Madagascar. Oh. So this is actually the southern part of Madagascar, and uh, we were looking into seeing what how, what we can do uh, if Korea pairs up with uh, WFP. And that's actually, that's like uh, that's a, a fisheries uh, village in the southern part of Madagascar, and they actually uh, well, <laughs> oh. yeah, they 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 are very uh, <laughs> even though the 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 suffering there is is really uh, unimaginable. You know, they they are very kind people. You know, the, and and they they came out to really uh, welcome us, and uh, this is actually uh, a school. Uh, and we're trying to provide uh, the basic uh, nutrition that the kids need. In the, and that's a school canteen over there in Madagascar, mm -hmm. uh, in the southern part. This is actually the, uh, another project that I launched uh, with uh, UNICEF. Uh, this is to protect the biodiversity, the, the national forest there. And uh, because of the, the, the uh, poverty, the people are resorting to these forests. You know, they they have no other uh, option but to uh, cut down the trees and and hunt the animals. So what we're trying to do, this is me uh, talking with the local community, uh, with our experts. What we're trying to do through this program is to empower the local communities so that they could get get a source of income by becoming like, tourist guides or managers of the national parks. This is the this is a park in the in the northeastern part of uh, no, northwestern part of uh, Madagascar and and this is another project that uh, we launched uh, with uh, Dr. Choi Jae Chun, the well uh, well renowned uh, Korean uh, scholar and expert on biodiversity. So he led an expedition with us. Uh, into the northwestern uh, part of, of Madagascar, and we did the same thing there, empowering the local community. Right, I see, and you gained quite a lot of uh, media attention during your time in Madagascar. And well, what do you think really makes Korea stand out from other developed countries uh, with presence in Madagascar, I suppose? Uh, how did this really affect your role as the Korean master there as well? Well, you know, Korea uh, is pretty much the only country in the world that uh, was able to become a, an advanced uh, uh, country. And, uh, you know, we were colonized, and as I said, and we went through a, a horrific Korean War. And that actually resonates with, uh, with uh, people like, uh, the, like the Malagasy people, because that's actually what they went through. So, so we really know what they have to go through. Uh, and I, were thi I think we're the only advanced nations in the world that could say that we, you know, we were there uh, in your shoes and we know what it's like and we would like to ensure uh, how we were able to, to uh, develop our, our nation. So I think that, that story, that narrative really resonates with, uh, with the uh, Malagasy people. And it seems that you made a lot of effort to really um help that message resonate as well. I mean, you learned the local language, I believe, and you were one of the very few ambassadors who actually learned the local language of uh, Malagasy. So what really prompted you to do that? Well, you know, French is also the, the official working language of Madagascar. Uh, but, uh, but a little while after my arrival, I noticed that the, the, the just the regular people, the Malagasy people, don't really speak that much French. And it's just the, you know, the government officials. So. So in order to really reach out to the people, I figured I'll just have to learn the, the Malagasy language. And, and it's a beautiful language. So it's a really poetic language. And uh, for instance, in Malagasy, uh, you say Maso Andrew for, for the sun, you know, sun. But, and Maso means the eye and, and Andrew means day. So in Malagasy, the sun is the eye of the day. You know, it's, it's, it's really beautiful how they, they, they make up these words. And, and you have to listen to the very end of the sentence uh, to know who they're talking about because the <laughs> subject of the sentence comes at the very end. Oh. So, so you have to listen, you know, very carefully. You really have to pay attention. Yeah. So it's a, it's a beautiful language. And, um, and uh, the first time I tried to talk in the Malagasy, I, I, I started my speech, uh, the first paragraph, and then and then moved on to the to making the whole speech in Malagasy, 
And then the one time, uh, at the uh, actually uh, after a while, when I became you know, uh, when I became confident enough to talk in Malagasy, but you know, basic Malagasy, of course, uh, this uh, program called Starvent, uh, you can see in, in the video now, the, it's like an entertainment program where they invite uh, invite you know like you know people, well-known people, and they invited me, uh, and I was the uh, first ambassador to. To talk with them, and <laughs> uh, this and this program, so so that was really uh, a, a lot of fun, and uh, I was able to reach out to to the regular Malagasy people after uh, my appearance in this uh, in this entertainment program. Right, and well, yeah. you were on the national uh, TV, of course, but you were also um, really becoming something of a hit on YouTube as well. So, how did you uh, start doing YouTube videos? Well, that that was actually, <laughs> you know, but uh, it, it happened uh, just like that because um, uh, it was a it was a uh, it was a newly opened embassy, and uh, there was, I was under a lot of budget constraints and all, and uh, and at the same time, you know, I I had to uh, figure out a way to to engage not only Madagascar people, but also the Korean people, let them know what's going on in Madagascar. And I just found out that you know running a YouTube channel is is free of charge. It's, uh, <laughs> it doesn't cost them much, anything. So I just resorted to making uh, videos myself and editing. And I self-taught myself to do this. And and uh, and yeah. And luckily, a lot of people watched the the video and and got to know what's going on in Madagascar. And that that video actually uh, that we're seeing now is a video of me. Uh, uh, we, we did a Taekwondo contest and I figured I'll just uh, make a demonstration of breaking the bricks myself. And the brick was supposed to be a little brittle, and <laughs> but uh, uh, as it turned out, it was not really that brittle at all. So uh, I kind of hurt myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, so, so I, I had a lot of fun uh, making these videos and filming it and um, editing it and yeah. Right, and I'm um, the very uh, just heartwarming. I mean, you can just sense your you know genuine love for the Madagascar people. And actually, one of our um, producers, she's a massive fan, so she was talking about your videos um, a long time before we actually did our first interview. But um, well, in terms of going forward, though, you've been uh, back here in South Korea uh, for around two years now, and you've been working on our foreign policy, of course, and now South Korea wants to become a global pivotal state, do more for the world and um, play a bigger role. So what's your personal vision for South Korea as a global pivotal state? Yes, uh, you know, my experience in, in Madagascar has really shaped uh, a lot uh, and, and, uh, uh, and impacted the way I think of the role of Korea, especially as we, uh, as the new government now, uh, is uh, geared to become a, a global pivotal state. You know that's that's our uh, uh, foreign policy orientation now. And I learned from Malagasy people how you know, despite the sufferings that they had to go through, you know, they're really resilient. There, you know, and I have the, the 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 biggest respect for the Malagasy people. How you know they, you know, they come, keep bouncing back from from these uh, challenges. And I think that's that's what. Uh, Korea would like to do in in uh, in advancing uh, our uh, global pivotal state initiative to really support the people uh, in the world in and becoming more resilient to the challenges and 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 overcoming the challenges and and uh, until very recently we you know we our foreign policy was focused more on the Korean Peninsula itself because you know we have the North Korean threat of course and you know we have uh, we have China we have Japan we have all the great powers here uh, on the Korean Peninsula but uh, now we think that uh, it's uh, Korea can deal with what's happening here in our immediate neighborhood but also go beyond uh, and reach out to the to the to the world, and and take on a, a, a bigger role and bigger responsibility in uh, in contributing to to the freedom, uh, prosperity, and peace peace of the world, and that's uh, and that's pretty much the gist of our uh, global pivotal state uh, initiative. Right, and uh, in terms of reaching those uh, goals, well. You're currently working as the coordinator of the Indo-Pacific Strategy Task Force um, at the Foreign Ministry now. And well, what can we expect to see from Korea's own Indo-Pacific strategy? I mean, what are some of the key elements? Yes, uh, 
We've been working on the, our Indo-Pacific strategy for quite a while. It's been about uh, seven, eight months now. And hopefully uh, we're at the last stage and uh, we're planning to announce it uh, within uh, this year, so next week. <laughs> And uh, it, it's, it lays out our, our vision uh, to, to implement our uh, GPS initiative in the Indo-Pacific region. As I said, there are three pillars, you know, the freedom pillar, peace pillar, and the prosperity pillar. And uh, we'd like to uh, work with our friends and, and, and partners and, and, and pretty much anyone who uh, subscribe to, the, to this vision that, we, uh, that, we, uh, we, that we're presenting. Uh, to work together and so it's a it's an inclusive uh, strategy and uh, we'd like to build a long-lasting uh, relationship uh, based on trust and uh, whatever we do has to be uh, beneficial for for everybody in the region so that's those are the three uh, principles that uh, we're going to lay out in our Indo-Pacific strategy. And this is basically about you know, sharing uh, our experience, sharing what Korea was uh, able to do with our partners and allies and uh, partners and friends in the region. And actually, this uh, Indo-Pacific uh, strategy includes not only uh, you know, the ASEAN uh, and South Asia and Oceania, uh, regions, but also uh, parts of uh, Africa. So we've included the African Indian Ocean uh, region. So in that sense, uh, we're going to be more focused on on uh, you know, uh, supporting uh, the countries in, on the African uh, continent as well uh, in, in reaching the, their goals of national development. Well, we're excited to hear the full mm -hmm. details when the strategy is out. And mm -hmm. well, today, thank you so much for your time today, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. You. That was Ambassador Im sang former ambassador of South Korea to Madagascar and the South Korean diplomat, um, author of Mission Madagascar, which is a great read available in bookstores, of course, in Korean. But if you don't speak Korean, great uh, chance to start learning Korean. But anyway, thank you very much to our viewers for tuning in. Global Insight airs Monday to Fridays uh, at 9.30 a.m. South Korea time. Do tune in again. Thank you.